All right, in this video, I'm going to go through the first, uh, I don't know, the first quarter, I guess, of section three from the practice test, the redesigned SAT practice test one that's up on their website. Uh, this is the section where you're not allowed a calculator, as it says right here. Um, and I'm only going to do the first quarter in this video because I'm going to go through these kind of slowly and maybe even show you a couple ways to solve a few of these guys. Uh, so let's get started. You have all this information that's given to you. I will refer back to this if I ever use it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to jump ahead and look at the first problem here. First problem says x minus 1 over 3 equals k. Okay. But then it also tells you that k equals 3. So really, they're giving you these two statements. But what they're giving you is that this x minus 1 over 3 thing is equal to, and then instead of writing k, I can just write the number 3 because I'm told that k equals 3. So really, this is kind of a complex way of giving you this expression here. And once you have this expression, I mean, I want to give you some clever way of solving it, something different than any other book would recommend. Uh, but frankly, I think the easiest way to solve this is what every other book would recommend, which is to solve this algebraically for x. In other words, do things to both sides of the equation so that you end up with this x right here all by itself. Because what you're trying to do is figure out what is the value of x. So you got this minus 1 you need to get rid of and this 3 you need to get rid of. And in order to follow the order of operations, what I'm going to do first is multiply both sides of the equation by 3. That will cancel out the 3 on the left-hand side of the equation. And then this 3 times that 3 I multiply by will turn into a 9. So multiplying both sides of this equation by 3 gets me here. And then I almost have the x all by itself. I just have this minus 1 to deal with. To get rid of this minus 1, I'm going to add 1 to both sides of the equation and get x equals 10. If you had time, maybe at the end of the test, uh, you go back and check your answer. You could take this 10 and plug it in here. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Oh yeah, good. K was supposed to equal 3. I suppose from the very start, you could have just plugged these numbers into this equation and see which one works. What you'll find is this is the only one that works. But without a calculator, I think that might end up taking you longer than doing it this way. And it might also be a method that's more prone to mistakes, do some algebraic or some arithmetic mistakes in your head. Uh, so probably just bite the bullet and do the algebra. It's not that bad. All right, the second one here, uh, I guess what you need to know to do this problem is uh, how to add. These are what are called complex numbers. And the nice thing about complex numbers is they were written in this form for a reason, to make them kind of intuitive of how you deal with them. Essentially, you just treat the i like it were a variable. What I mean is if I asked you what's 7 plus 3x plus negative 8 plus 9x, um, think about what you'd do. You'd probably combine like terms. You'd take this 7 and this negative 8, and you'd add those together. 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. Uh, so it can't be this answer or this answer. And then you take this 3x, I guess, if it were a variable, plus this 9x, and you'd get 12x. Um, I don't have x's, I have i's. But the way complex numbers work is a lot like the way this works if you're adding um, with variables in there. Uh, you just sum this, which is called the real part, and this is which is called the imaginary part. And if you do that, you get negative 1 plus 12i. Looks like my answer is this guy right here. Uh, one note, something to be careful of here. If this were subtracting complex numbers, uh, it would be very similar to this problem. You just have to make sure that you subtracted both parts. You do 7 minus negative 8, which is 15, and then you do 3i minus 9i. But I think if this were subtraction, which it's not to be fair, but if this were subtraction, the part a lot of people would get wrong and something that would probably be an answer listed over here would be negative 6i or would be uh, positive 12i. People would forget to subtract this term. They'd only subtract the first one. So just word of caution, if this were a minus sign right here, make sure you subtract the real parts and you also subtract the complex parts. All right, the third one. On Saturday afternoon, that's not relevant, Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours. So think about what that means. In the first hour, he sent M. In the second hour, he sent M more. So now he sent twice M. In the third hour, he sent M more, so now he's uh, sent 3M. And then another M the next hour, and another M the next hour. In total, Armand would have sent 5M text messages. So this is Armand. Um, and then what about Tyrone? Well, Tyrone sent P text messages every hour for four hours. So P in the first hour, P more, P more, P more. I guess he would have sent four times whatever P is equal to. These are the text messages that Tyrone sent. Uh, which of the following represents the total number of text messages? So not just Armand's, but Armand's and Tyrone's. You want to add those together, you get 5M plus 4P, which is 
option C here, uh, and that would be your answer. Again, if you have time, maybe at the end of a text uh, of a test, if you're not too sure, like I think that's right, it kind of feels right, but I'm not 100% sure, what you could do is plug in some numbers. Suppose that Armand sent, I don't know, maybe M is two, maybe he's sending two text messages every hour. And Tyrone is sending, I don't know, maybe P equals three. I'm just choosing these numbers arbitrarily, but I'm picking them small enough so I can do this, these calculations in my head. If Armand is sending two every hour, then after five hours, it would make sense that Armand would have sent five times two, in other words, 10 text messages. And after four hours, well, if he's sending three every hour, after four hours, I guess Tyrone would have sent 12 text messages. So how many total text messages do I have? I have 22. You go through and figure out which of these expressions equals 22 when m equals 2 and p equals 3. Um, I think what you'll find is c is the only one that works out. Frankly, I think this way in blue would take you a lot longer than the way in red, but the way in red kind of forces you to be able to understand what all this verbiage means in terms of the symbols and the math. Uh, so there's a little bit of a check, I suppose, if you needed to check for number three. All right, number four. Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation. Okay, finally we're getting to something useful here. P, which is the number of phones left, is equal to 108 minus 23 times D, where D is the number of days she has worked that week. So the way you can interpret this, it often helps to think about if D equals zero, I get 108. So before she's worked any days that week, she has 108 phones left to repair. And then every single day, she's subtracting 23. So if D equals one, she only subtracts 23 once. If D equals two, she's subtracting 23 twice. Each day, she's fixing 23 phones. So as D gets bigger and bigger, we subtract a larger and larger number here. Anyways, let's go through and figure out what they're asking for. What is the meaning of the value 108 in the equation? Well, I kind of already talked about that. Uh, the 108 is the amount of phones that she would have uh, left to do when D equals zero. So let's see which of these statements in English correspond with that. Uh, Kathy will complete the repairs within 108 days. No, no, the 108 is, has something to do with phones, not has anything to do with days. Uh, so it's certainly not that. Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. That sounds like a winner right there, right? She starts each week, meaning she's worked zero days that week. If she's worked zero days, she's got 108 phones to fix. That sounds good. Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per hour? Absolutely not. Um, Kathy repairs phones at a rate of 108 per day. That one's close. She repairs phones at a rate of 23 per day. This 23 um, is similar to what they're giving you in part D. So you can imagine a different problem where it asks you for the meaning of the 23. And you would say that's the rate uh, that she repairs phones each day, something like that. But that's not what they're asking for. Uh, what they're asking for is what the 108 means, and that is answer B. All right, last one in this video, number five, which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Uh, so what you need to know here is that you can only combine like terms. So you have this thing and you're trying to subtract this thing. I think the easiest thing to do first is to get rid of all the parentheses. To be perfectly honest, you don't have to get rid of all the parentheses, but I think it's less likely you'll make a mistake if you do. So in this first, um, set of parentheses here, I got x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5xy squared. Note, none of these are like terms. This one has an x squared, and neither of these has an x squared. This one's got a y squared, this one does too, but this one's also got an x, so those are different. From that, I want to subtract this thing. I want to subtract the entire thing, not just the first term. So I have to take this negative and essentially distribute it to each of the terms in here. The terms are the things that are separated by plus and minus signs. So minus negative x squared y, I can write as plus x squared y. Minus positive 3xy squared, I can write as minus 3xy squared. And minus negative 3y squared, I can write as plus 3y squared. So I like to write these without the parentheses. And as I said, you don't have to do it this way. I'll give you a second way of doing this as well. But when you have it written like this with no parentheses, all you got to do is go through and combine like terms. So look for your x squared y's. Not an x squared y, not an x squared y. Hey, there's an x squared y right there. Not an x squared y, not an x squared y. I got two of these guys. I have one of them here plus one more of them there. So in total, I have two x squared y. 
I'm going to underline that so that when I check my answer later, I can see that these two corresponded with this guy. And now I got the minus 3y squared. I wonder if I have any y squared terms that I can combine this with. Nope. Nope. Oh, here we go. I have plus 3y squared. Uh, minus 3y squared plus 3y squared. That leaves me with 0y squared. So I don't even have to write it down here. Uh, finally, the 5xy squared. Let's see. Do I have any other xy squareds? I do right here. Uh, positive 5 of these xy squareds minus 3 of these xy squareds net out to positive 2, the 5 minus the 3, of these xy squared things. Uh, so what I'm looking for over here is 2x squared y plus 2xy squared, uh, which is exactly what I have in option C. I mentioned there's another way you can do this. The other way you can do this that might be quicker, but I think it would be more prone to making mistakes, is you have this x squared y here. Look for x squared y's over here. Oh, here it is. Okay, I want to take this and I want to subtract this. So I have one of them and I want to subtract, because of this symbol, negative one of them. Subtracting negative one is the same as adding one, so I have one plus one more. But that, I think, is what would cause the trouble. That minus the negative, I think, would cause people trouble if they try to do it immediately like this. At least some people. I don't know who you are. Uh, but if you're doing it that way, you then jump to the 3y squareds, and you'd be like, oh, there we go over here. Uh, negative 3y squared minus negative 3y squared is the same as negative 3y squared plus 3y squared, which, as we talked about before, nets out to zero. And then you can combine these guys, because they're like terms 5 minus 3 gives you the 2xy squared. Uh, so I'm going to end this video here and do the rest of this test in another video.